Hi everyone, this is Teo from parkerblocks.com. A few days ago, I have a viewer who asked me about the color selection that I have in my palette. So today I'm going to talk about the 12 colors that I'm currently using. In case you are wondering about this plastic palette that I'm using, this is called the Portable Painter. This is it. I will put the link in the video description below. It's a very nice palette that you can attach water trays to on the side and it has a lot of mixing areas here and here so let me put this away so these are the 12 colors that I'm currently using most of these are Daniel Smith colors with the exception of this two from Winsor & Newton I'm trying to use up these two colors that's why I have them in this palette so um, rather than talking about the colors let me just show you the color swatches by the way later on I will be showing you some color mixes and also some sample sketches that I have painted with these colors so the first color that I have is lemon yellow this is PY175 this is a very bright cool yellow that is transparent it's very strong you seldom see this color like this in nature so it's very difficult to use you do have to mix it with some other colors. This is New Gambosch. This is PY153. This is also from Daniel Smith. I heard that they have used a new formula for the New Gambosch. I'm using the old one, so this is still PY153. This is Yellow Ochre from Winsor & Newton. This is PY43. I like to use this color because this is great for mixing with skin tone. And for subjects that are yellow in color, sometimes I would just use this color straight from the pen because it's a very subdued yellow color that is not too glaring. And if I use it straight from the pen, it's not too striking as well. So it looks quite natural. This is the red that I have, Queen of Crydon red, PV19. It's not that warm red that I prefer. But I'm trying to use up this paint before I move on to buying new tubes. This is Queen of Crydon Magenta PR202. This is Italian Burnt Sienna PBR7. I believe that this is the same as the normal Burnt Sienna, but I do not have the normal Burnt Sienna from Daniel Smith, so I'm not able to tell you the differences between the two burnt sienna. This is Taylor Blue Green Shade PB15. It's a very strong staining, transparent blue color. I like to use this to mix black. This is French Ultramarine, a transparent granulating blue color. This is warmer compared to Taylor Blue which is cooler this is PG sorry PB29 I wrote that wrongly this is my latest favorite color cerulean blue chromium this looks like sky blue it has very beautiful granulating texture I really love to use this color and it creates some very beautiful gray tones when you mix with earth tones this is PB36 this is a phthalo green blue shade from Winsor & Newton. Winsor & Newton's phthalo green is a mixture of PG7 with PG36. And for Winsor & Newton, they call their phthalo green Winsor Green. So phthalo green is the name of the Daniel Smith paint. Winsor Green is the name from Winsor & Newton. This is a very strong staining green color. I used to use Viridian from Daniel Smith, but I like to use my paints into in pans like this. And when Viridian dries, it dries back into a rock, which is very difficult to re-wet. So that's why I stopped using that color and changed to using Thalo Green. But Viridian Green is a very nice green as well. It's granulating, but if you want to use it, you should keep it in a tube not in a pan 
My next favorite color is sap green. This is PO49 with PG7. So this has some yellow in it. It's a warm green. If you want to, you can actually mix lemon yellow with French ultramarine to get this green color. I included green color in my palette because it saves me a lot of time from having to mix them. And it also keeps my yellow clean. Uh, one thing to note about this green is it has PG7 and notice here it also has PG7. When you, when you choose colors for your palette, it's good to have as little, how should I say it? Try to choose single pigment colors and if you have to choose a color that has two pigments, make sure that one of the pigments is already included in another color. So in this case, there is PG7 here and this color, this pigment is included in phthalo green as well. So that's uh, good. And the last color that I am probably going to swap out is Soda Light Genuine because this is quite dark on its own and it's it has really limiting mixing potential. This is a color that's meant to be used on its own and it has a nice granulating texture but I can probably mix this color with some other color so I am probably going to drop this color from my palette soon. When choosing colors to include in my palette, I choose transparent colors because they are easier to mix with and because I use pen and ink for my sketches, I would want the lines to show through underneath the watercolor. So these are my 12 colors. All right, let me show you some color mixes now. For the sky, I used cerulean blue and some ultramarine. The color that is lighter, that is cooler is cerulean blue. So it will look something like this. And sometimes I will actually blend it with ultramarine to get a gradation a look that is more interesting than using a flat color. So this is how it looks like. This has more ultramarine and this has a bit more cerulean. It's a very nice cyan sky blue color. So to get this look, I added a bit more water to make it a bit lighter. For the ground here, there are some purple. For that, I mixed either ultramarine or cerulean with Quinacridon, red or magenta. I cannot remember the exact color that I used. So this has some purple in it. I think it's this color. So that's Quinacridon red. But of course, I use a lot more water there. Now for the gray tones, I added some burnt sienna. So when you add burnt sienna to blue, usually you can get a very nice gray tone. So in this case, this is cerulean blue and burnt sienna, Italian burnt sienna. It still has some purple tone in it because of the quinacridone red but it's nice. For the greens, well, for this part here, this is just sap green. So this is sap green. And usually to get some variation, I would add French ultramarine. So I'm adding some ultramarine now. So you can see this green is a bit darker now because sap green is warm, ultramarine is warm, they work well together. And when this mixture is dry, I will add phthalo green to the mixture to get the shadow shapes. So in this case, let's try and add sap green and phthalo green right now. I just want to show you how dark it can get. 
So phthalo green is a bit bright. If you really want to get that dark tone, you can add some red to it. So this is what happens when I add that red. Let me put it here so they can see it. For the building here, I just used yellow ochre straight from the pen. And all these shadow areas, they are mixed either with French ultramarine or cerulean with Italian burnt sienna. Now for this sketch, I used cerulean blue for the sky. I blended some new gum wash to the back. And for the red color, I use queen red with new gum wash. All these pink colors, they are diluted queen of crayon red. And here is new gum wash with queen red. I try to limit myself to using around three, four, five colors for mixing usually. If you use too much colors, it can be quite difficult to control. And some colors, they just do not work well with others when mixed. So for this particular sketch, I want to point you to this mixture. This is a mixture with cerulean blue and quinacridone red or quinacridone magenta. Cerulean blue is a rather heavy pigment, so it would settle down. It would separate itself from the other colors like this, and it's quite nice. It can give you very nice granulating textures. For this sketch, I used French ultramarine predominantly for the tones here and here I use ultramarine with queen magenta to get that purple tone and here is basically ultramarine with a lot of burnt sienna cerulean blue yellow ochre and queen of Crichton red sap green and phthalo green I added some lemon yellow just to get that yellow uh, look just to get the brighter look and for the ground it's cerulean blue with some quinacridone magenta or quinacridone red this is lemon yellow with new gum wash it's very uh, it's not easy to use lemon yellow on its own that's why i always try to mix it with new gum wash a bit here a bit there so that i can get that um, gradation going on again cerulean blue sap green phthalo green french ultramarine by the way all these sketches are from the sketching ho chi minh city series of time-lapse videos and tutorials that i have created i will put the links to each individual uh, sketch time lapse in the video description below. Now, for this particular sketch, I use French ultramarine here. I use cerulean blue here. I started with French ultramarine, but halfway through, I felt that it doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right, so I changed to cerulean blue, which is uh, really beautiful. That's why it's one of my favorite colors right now. For the building, I use yellow ochre mixed with some quinacridone red. And this part here is just French ultramarine with burnt sienna. A lot of paint without a lot of water to get this intense dark tone. And for this last sketch, I used soda light genuine mixed with a bit of burnt sienna if i use soda light genuine on its own it's going to look a bit flat it's going to look something like this so i added some burnt sienna to give it some variation so for example here i can see both colors working together to give me this shade of color which i find quite pleasing and here there are some traces of burnt sienna as well so these are the 12 colors that I'm currently using. If you are to ask me to recommend you some colors, well, it's very difficult for me to do so because 
Different artists have different preference for colors. The color that I like may not be the color that you like. My general recommendation would be to get colors that are easy to mix with other colors. Get single pigment colors. If you want a color palette that is very versatile, include as many primary colors as you can. For example, include three yellows, three reds, and three blues. I have convenient colors like phthalo green, sap green, and yellow ochre because I use them a lot and they really help me save a lot of time. That's why I included them. For this color, Soda Light Genuine, I'm probably going to just drop this and replace it with a warm red since I do not have a strong warm red right now. Another common question that I get is can you mix watercolors from different brands like Daniel Smith with Winston Newton, Winston Newton with M. Graham? The answer is yes, why not? And the last question that, that I want to answer is which brand do I recommend? Well, it's a difficult question to answer because for Daniel Smith, Winston Newton, Dale Rowney, M. Graham, these are all very good brands. The quality between these brands would be difficult to tell apart. So my general recommendation is to get whatever brand that is easiest for you to get, that's easiest for you to replace when you run out of paint. And I think it's starting to rain right now, so I'm going to end my video here. Thanks for watching. I hope this is helpful. See you in the next video. Bye.